I can't even see around that bend because this whole place is just thick with every bush you can imagine. I get this sense that it's so easy to get lost here. I'm in Gabon, the most forested country in all of Africa. Nearly 90% of it is just like this, rainforest. It's such an unfamiliar environment to me. And yet I feel like I'm at the mercy of everything around me. I can definitely tell you now that I am well outside my comfort zone. That's how I like to do things, learn by doing. I've given myself seven days to make it deep in the Gabonese jungle. I want to learn all I can about this mysterious place and survive the experience. It's smooth now, but it can get nasty on rapids. Gosh, it's getting loud. It's making me nervous. I can't see very far downstream, especially when it's a river that you don't know. There's spray. And that roar's definitely getting louder. That's not rapid. I can't see the river, that's a waterfall. Get off the water, get off the water, get off the water. Power, 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 power. I want to stay to that side. Power through. Whoa, 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 that's a drop. That's a drop. Push out, push out. I'm Dwayne Fields, explorer and adventurer. Stop, 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 stop. In the wilderness is where I come alive. Oh, Viper! It's my true calling. Whoa! In 2010, I became the first black British man to trek to the North Pole. Progress is that way. I love to push myself to the limit. Whoa, 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 that's a drop. Now, I'm challenging myself to survive a week in some of the harshest environments on Earth. Oh, man, this is going to be intense. Using all my skill, determination, and will to survive. Here we go. That's why I'm here, in the rainforests of Gabon. This is going to be my seven toughest days. I knew there was a waterfall coming, but I did not expect it so quickly. <sighs> Back on dry ground is where the real struggle begins. The Gabonese jungle is unlike any extreme environment I've ever faced. In preparation for my challenge, I met jungle guide Gislaine, who's given me a few pointers that may help me survive on my mission. Are there any roads, any footpaths, any what? what there are no roads. But there will be definitely elephant trails. This area isn't very well mapped, is it? No. It's remote. It's, it's forest, it's jungle, it's a tropical forest, so it's going to be tough. It's hard to navigate any distance in the deep canopy with no obvious landmarks. Why did you come here? I just can't learn things from a book, man. But Ghislaine mentioned there's an elaborate underground cave system to the south, which I hope to find. My plan is to meet up with Ghislaine in seven days at a remote airstrip. With so little information to go on, I have no idea what lies in between. Let's have a look at what nearly ended me. It's massive. That looks like it's about 180 feet. I've literally just come out, just up there. I can hear it, I can see all the spray. Couldn't see it. There's a ledge here. 
but even that looks terrible. The water is just flooding off of this, hitting that. There's no way I can get down here. I'm gonna have to go downstream. Some tall trees there. Probably use one of those as an anchor. Make my way down to the base of this waterfall. See if I can find a way back onto the water down there. Up here, not gonna happen. A sling around this. That's not going anywhere. Oh, I've climbed before. I've used ropes before. Not with this much water. Can't even tell if it's rain or if it's spray. The noise, the spray, absolutely epic. That's my umbilical. Here we go. The water's blind, it's hurt in my eyes. Should have brought goggles. I've never been so wet and not been fully submerged. It's raining up, it's raining down, it's coming from the side. Ah, every single thing is soaking wet. is deafening. Awesome. I'm going to head downstream and try and get down past these rapids, see if I can get back on the water. As much as I can hear the waterfall, I can feel it. When you touch the rocks, you can feel it shaking, vibrating them. Huge amount of power. In the peak of the rainy season, it's estimated these falls launch nearly a thousand tons of water every second. That's like 900 small cars slamming down this section of the river every second. I do not want to go in there. Gabon gets up to 11 feet of rainfall each year and the swollen rivers make kayaking a dangerous option. I'm here at the end of the wet season. Rapids and waterfalls are big hazards out here. Working through this dense jungle is really tough. Along with crocodiles, Gabon has 30 species of venomous snake and nearly 100,000 forest elephants. The thick, impenetrable growth makes any encounter with them potentially dangerous. I may not know how close they are until it's too late. Uh, this tree is massive. Ah, oh, good. See this resin? I reckon if this is the Akume tree, it should light. This Akume resin's got flammable oils, making it a great fire star. Come on, come on. This is awesome. I can smell that. I'm almost guaranteed fire tonight. Also, the smoke, it keeps mosquitoes and other insects away. All right, enough of that. Let me find something to wrap this in, keep it safe. That's a really good find. A really, really good find. <sighs> what was that? Something just slithered down underneath that log. Could be a crocodile, could be a snake, could be a frog. That's the thing you just don't know in here. That direction, southeast, following the river down there is going to take me off course, and I'm losing daylight quickly. I'm going to wade across. I have to do it before it gets dark. 
I know there's crocodile. As night falls, they come out, they get in the water, they start hunting. I'm gonna do it now. And take my pack off. If it suddenly gets deep, I can use this to float. There's a burrow, there's a crocodile that owns it. There's more burrows all the way along. They could belong to dwarf crocodiles, which aren't known to be dangerous. But there are three species of croc in Gabon, including the Nile crocodile. Nile crocs can grow up to 20 feet long and are known to eat pretty much anything that moves. They're dangerous, stealthy predators, and I've heard there are up to 200 deaths a year in Africa from Nile croc attacks. Whoa, the mud just sucks your feet down. This is the creepiest thing I've ever done. Whoa, there we go. Now it's getting deeper. Whoa. Hard to tell if you're brushing something or if it's brushing you. Whoa. They're just bubbles just coming up to the surface. It makes you wonder what's under there. Oh. Something's in here. Dry land there. Good, I'm out of that. I've only got about an hour of daylight left, so I'll be hard pressed to get back to the river by nightfall. It's getting to that stage of the day now where I'm looking for a place to camp. That's not too bad, is it? Yeah, this is good. Ants, look at that. That's why I chose a hammock. Yeah, that's going far. And ants all here. Ooh. Oh, that's got ants flooding out of it. Ants, 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 ants. Just carries on. Oh, look, there's a mass of them. how they find their way in. Ants are the most abundant insects on Earth. 20 quadrillion of them. That's a 20 with 15 zeros after it. There's 383 species of ants in Gabon, and it feels like right now, they're all here. Something a mate of mine showed me. Menthol rub on the cords between where you're sleeping and the tree. That way no creepy crawlies will get to you. They hate this stuff. The other one, squash balls. Down one side. Ah. Oh. This is like a dream. Shelter done, firewood. It's just, everything's soaked. If I can't find dry wood, make dry wood. I've just got to cut the outer parts to get to the dry core inside. That's going to be really easy to light. The fire is essential out here for safety at night, not just comfort. It'll discourage any curious critters from getting too close. Hopefully. Now for the pierce de resistance. 
so glad I found this Akume resin. Let's see if this works. Oh, come on. Come on. Don't play games with me. Come on. Oh. Yes. Keep going. Come on. I'm in the middle of a rainforest and I have fire. Morale on a hundred right now. It's so weird that a fire right here in the middle of a rainforest in Gabon can remind me of me being a kid in Jamaica, thousands of miles away. But it does. It reminds me of building up a fire just like this one and I'd roast cashew nuts on it. Dwayne Fields, you bad boy. You made fire in a deep, dark jungle. I'm excited. It's going pretty well. I think five, six-year-old Dwayne Fields will be mad proud right now. Bam, winning. All right, Dwayne, get to work. I didn't have any mosquitoes, I didn't have any ants, so... Top tip, use menthol rub. It's day two and I've barely made a dent in this wall of jungle. There's a lot of green between me and those caves I'm looking for. That's a snake. I think it's a bush viper. Look how well camouflaged it is. Bush vipers ambush their prey and then strike within milliseconds. The venom can be fatal and we're a long way from help. I could have passed 50 on the way up here. It's one thing knowing that they're here, but until you see one, I don't know, it just clicks something in your head, in your mind, you just, oh gosh, every single thing looks like a snake now. Makes my skin crawl. This is so thick. Ah, ah this is painful. Ah, 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 ah. It's just these, they're taking out my legs. This jungle is tough. There's rocks, there's pitfalls, and not to mention every single thing has a spine on it. Everything in here is just out to get me, it feels like. I've had enough of this jungle forcing you to change direction. I'll never make it to the airstrip if I have to keep fighting through the jungle like this. I'm gonna have to come up with a different plan. I've barely covered any ground. The river will be faster. I need to jump back on the water. It's a lot calmer now cover a lot more ground before sunset and hopefully find a spot to camp while there's still light. Back into the unknown. I won't make it to the caves tonight. I've burnt up too much time. I need to find a spot to make camp. We've probably got an hour or so of sunlight. And there's this weird haze, like a mist, just coming off all the trees. It proper mystic looking. As you lose the light, you start listening more because you can't use your eyes as much. It's like a whole list of animals are coming alive now. I can hear frogs or birds or insects over there because they all sound the same when you can't see them. Was that? This inlet, the trees thin a little bit. This is creepy. 
That is hard ground. I think I locked out. Make sure there's nothing. Crocodiles or anything in here. Tree, tree. That's my hammock sorted. That's dry wood. This is good. Just in time. This is a completely different world. I've never been to a jungle like this. It reminds me of when I lived in London and feeling like I didn't belong. Living basically a lie. That sense of not fitting in, not finding a place in the world. And it led me down a path where I lost myself. I would like to think that I will make it through this challenge. If I do, I will have somehow gone back to my roots after leaving them for so long. On this map, the airstrip isn't that far away. Well, in a straight line anyway. The rivers don't take me where I need to go, so I'm gonna cut my way through the bush, which I don't really wanna do. Ghislaine told me about a cave system that could get me out of this green hell for a while. Trouble is, this area isn't very well mapped, which means I don't know exactly how to get there, but I know I need to head south. This jungle is full of so many challenges. As I get further in, the heat is really taking its toll on me. We're so close to the equator and I'm feeling it. This time of year, the temperature really drops below 79 degrees Fahrenheit. Lane said there are people living in this jungle. He said, if I come across people, give out a call. Woo! I feel a bit nervous about that, actually. Woo! By calling, I'm telling them I'm here, and I don't mean them any harm, that I'm not a poacher. I want them to know I haven't come to take anything from them. I'm not trying to sneak across their property, across their land. Woo! That's a woman's voice. I can hear children as well. It could be the Baka, semi-nomadic hunter-gatherers. They've been living here for about 400 centuries. That's 80 times older than the ancient Egyptians. That's singing. Woo! I'm trying to get a whoop back so I feel like safe going in. I don't want to just walk into someone's village or camp or... Woo! That was a whoop back. Whoop! Oh, I've whooped. I don't know what to do now, because Ghislaine never told me what to do if they whoop back. Uh, bonjour. Uh, so this is the awkward part. I genuinely don't know what to do now. Um, uh, je m'appelle manger. Mon French, Francais, very petite. Oui. Yeah, oh, good. Hey, what do I remember from French in school? Um, uh, je m'appelle Dwayne. Uh, I'm long distance, grand, um, grand kilometer, grand voyage, Gra grand voyage, me. Uh, je mange, mange. I would, I'm hungry, hungry. See? Yay! 
Yeah? Down this way. Uh, you show me. Okay. Show me. Yeah, yeah. Show me. Yeah. Uh, I don't have a clue what's happening. The kids are telling me to go that way. Step, step there. I'm literally just following instructions now. They've blocked it there and they've blocked it here. Okay. Ah, they're trying to get me fish. Poisson, poisson, fish. I've never seen anything like this. Do you want me to do it? Take it out? They're trying to show me something, so I'm just... I don't even know, I'm just doing what they say. Uh, ah, you've got poisson there? Oh, where? This guy's doing something. He's put his hand in a hole in the, in the mud. I've never, ever in my life seen fishing like this before. It's just so labour-intensive. Oh, you've got fish? Uh, poisson. Le poisson. Oh, so it's fish that lives in the mud. Uh, c'est bon. Mm. Yeah, bon. Très bien. Oh. Uh, there's more fish? Whoa. C'est bon. Très bien. Oh, very good. That's three more fish. Bon. Uh, we go and eat. <laughs> c'est bon. Wow! We gonna cook some fish. Uh, oh. oh, that's a big. Oh, mm -hmm. They're wrapping the fish in marantase leaves. It's a good way to cook in the forest, and it keeps the flavor. They brought out the expert. I'm told the backer people can survive on this meager meal in dire times. Two fish is enough to sustain one person, depending on the size. When fishing's really good, 30 to 50 fish can feed a whole family. The backer flow with the forest. When they're here, they set up temporary camps following food sources. They go where the plants and animals are. I'm truly touched that they've so quickly embraced me into their way of life. C'est bon. Yeah, très bien, très bien. C'est bon. It's good. Uh, merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Yeah. Thank you so much. Merci. It's humbling for me to see how the backers seem to live so harmoniously with the environment. I feel like I can learn so much from them. But I can't stay around. I need to get to the caves and maybe they can help me. I don't know how to say this. Walk into into cave. Yeah, yeah. Grot. That way. I'm not entirely sure, but it sounds like it's in that direction, which is very good. I just want to enjoy this fire a little bit more, enjoy the company, and then maybe make my excuses and hit the road. Losing my bloody hat and my mind. I need to start thinking about making a camp for the night. I think that's an elephant print. It's hard to tell. There's an estimated 100,000 forest elephants that call Gabon home. Right now, at the end of the wet season, they're migrating from the protection of the jungle back out to the swampy lowlands. That's a lot of elephant traffic. I'm just looking for a decent-sized tree with enough branches that I can climb up or get up there and nest there for the night because I'm not sleeping on the ground. That's not too bad. I'm going to take my chances with this. I can't imagine it's going to be comfortable, but at least I'll be off the ground. I need a good weight. So I'm going to use these, tie my cord to a couple of these. It's weighty enough, I'm hopeful. 
see how good my aim is. Just through that one set right there, straight through the middle, pull it up. Oh! Ah, yes. Perfect. So now I can tie my rope to this end, pull it up, and get myself up the tree nice and safe for the night. Oh, yes. Ah, look at that. On a day like today, when I'm this tired, this is not the easiest thing to do. When I've got a heavy pack on my back and I've been making my way through this jungle all day, I'm tired, I'm sweaty. Oh. I can see some light through the trees now as well. And for the first time since getting into this jungle, I actually feel safe. I never imagined I'd ever be in a deep, dark jungle sleeping in a tree. <laughs> I feel like I'm supposed to be beating my chest or something, like get my whole Tarzan vibe going on. I'll try and get some sleep, safe in the knowledge that I'm not going to bump into any three-ton elephant in the dark. This place never sleeps. I haven't slept a wig. Every single frog, every single cricket, every bird, they just never stop. And it feels like they're all either in this tree or around this tree, and I'm, I'm the show and they're the audience. Just, just listen to this. You know, sleep deprivation is the worst thing. When you add that to the fact that I feel like the slightest movement, I'm going to fall. I'm really regretting coming up here. Oh, God. What was that? There's something in the bushes just down there. Can't see a damn thing out here. Black. I think I'm in its backyard and it decided it didn't want me here. <sighs> what a night. There was something down there last night. I know it. I don't know if it's me or if this jungle is getting thicker by the day. I swear it's getting thicker every single day. It feels like I'm working harder than the day before. I'm going to check out, see if I can see any tracks, find out what was down here last night. Look at this. I knew it. That's an elephant print. I can't mistake that. That's what an elephant print looks like. Round, toe, 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 toe. It's definitely down here. This is a path. Only an elephant would make a path like this. It has to be something big. And that's what they do. They're known as the ecologists of the forest. Whatever they eat, they walk around, they leave the seeds, they're basically creating the forest and the trails as they go. Once an elephant clears a bit of, bit of a path, other animals start to use it. And that's when it becomes like a proper visible, visible trail. That's an elephant. That's an elephant. This is an elephant here. Look at the size of that foot. This thing must be massive. My heart's pounding. I'm like a weird mix of excited and anxious. An elephant could be 20 feet from me and I wouldn't even know it. It's so thick in here. But that's the direction the trail goes in. Ghislaine said there's a waterfall at the entrance to the cave. If this trail was made by elephants searching for water, I may be in luck. It 
it's my final day here in Gabon. If I can find the caves and get through, I'll have one more challenge left. Get into the airstrip. It's a waterfall, I can see it. Looks like a big waterfall as well. Whoa. I think that's the cave. Ghislaine said this cavern is about a mile long and a single track. It'll be nice to get out of the jungle. Ugh. Let's have a look. This is flowing water. If it can get out, I can too. Which means I can follow this. No more hacking. No more jungle. Or strolling down a river underneath a jungle. Gabon has some of the oldest cave systems on the planet. For millions of years, water has been carving out the underground highways into this bedrock. Flash floods are a real and present threat. But, whoa, there's thousands of that. Not a massive fan of bats, to be honest. Just reminds me of some old vampire movie. Oh, oh gosh, that's bat poo. Ah, oh, it's moving. Uh, all these little white dots, are just bugs crawling. Not touching that. Their feces are called bat guano. Don't want to breathe this stuff in. There could be fungus spores in the air from it which can cause histoplasmosis, an infection of the lungs. Ah, oh, this is gross. Oh, God, look. They're all waking up now. Please don't poo on me. Thought playing in my mind. All of this damp area of rock, that was the water level recently. If it rains up top, down here will fill up and it could fill up fast. Need to get out. This is getting tired. Ah, so petite. What's down there? I can't get out there. I really hope I don't get stuck. Turning back now would not be good. Up. Follow the water. Covering a lot of a lot of ground. Well, a lot of underground. Could be anything in this water. You just don't know what's down here. Oh. Oh, snake. Oh, viper. That can kill. It's a viper. I can tell from the arrowhead shape on his head. I think that's a rhinoceros viper. The venom in that destroys tissue. If it bites me, that can kill. I'm moving straight on. They can swim, and they can swim fast upstream as well. I'm not claustrophobic, but this is... This is starting to do something to me. I need to get out of this cave now. It's just endless darkness. That's light. Come on, that's daylight. Ah, uh, 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 look at these trees. Uh, 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 
I'm out. Whoa, this is like, it's like a lost world. Never been so happy to see daylight and trees. Oh, that means it's back to bushwhacking. Just seen that vine and this vine here. It's made me think of something. When you get a good green one, this is still alive. Thick, like this, we might be lucky enough to find fresh water. Ah, oh yes. It's fresh, it's good to drink. That tastes like life. The wood's like a natural filter. The pores in the vine are small enough to filter out bacteria. The water's clear, not milky, no smells. On a hot, humid day in the jungle, that is as good as, if not better, than a can of Coke. So desperate to get out of here. This is the thickest it's been so far. Ah. Ah. It's getting lighter. Come on. That's light. Hang on. This has to be it. This is the airstrip. the airstrip. Ah, she's late. You made it. How are you doing? You'll never believe what's just happened over the last week. Ah, ah it's so good to see you, man. Yeah, me too. Did you find the waterfall? Did I find the waterfall? It found yeah. me. Oh, really? Yeah, I nearly went over. Ah, oh, mate, I'm so tired. I cannot believe it. I survived seven days in one of the wettest and densest rainforests I've ever heard of. And I learned some valuable lessons from Gabon's rivers and nomadic people. That no matter what I do, I can't fight nature. I need to flow with it. I feel rooted, and the roots here, they run deep. That's why I do this connecting with nature to connect with myself.